My name is John. I live off grid in the high desert of Arizona. I live as frugally and as sustainably as possible. And today I'm just going to give you some updates around the homestead. Today the piglets are two weeks old. So Bonnie, my sow right there, she's the mama of the the other sow right there and then all seven piglets. If you've been following along you know that I fenced my pigs in to this small pond here to see if they would glaze the pond and waterproof it after a certain amount of time. I'm pulling down the fencing and I had to dig it out and as I did so I could tell that it was quite heavily glazed um, meaning that organic matter has decomposed and you know created a layer that might be impermeable by water. Originally it all started with the idea of waterproofing that small pond to make sure that I could waterproof my larger one but it took such a long time that I finally just did a liner in my larger pond and we'll find out eventually if it holds water. I built a 3,600 gallon water cistern right here so it harvests rainwater off of the roof of the shop and that goes down into there. If this was to overflow for some reason, it would just kind of come down the little ditch here into that pond area. And there's actually a swell slash ditch that goes around the property to the large pond. The last monsoon season was the largest, heaviest monsoon season in a decade, they say. And my driveway held some water here. Since then, I've done a lot of grading, so it I haven't seen it hold any water and what should happen if if it was to rain super heavy here is that water would go over and down around the way so short of just throwing a few hundred gallons in there the only way we're gonna find out if it's really waterproofed is if there's a really heavy monsoon rain or well or if there's a heavy monsoon rain and it fills the cistern and it overflows so we'll see what happens you know if if it rains like crazy and I have some extra water, which doesn't really exist, extra water, but if I have so much water that I'm like, whatever, then we'll throw some in there and see what happens. So when I opened up the fencing, I had my boar and two older piglets, about six to nine months old, one female, one male. So when I brought them over, I put the female in with my sow. So now there's just two sows and piglets. On this side I have two boars and then just on the other side there I have three boar goats so one of them is a doe and her two kids and she's also pregnant with hopefully two more now that I built a larger cistern on the other side of the shop I added I moved <laughs> I moved a couple of the IBC totes, so now there's three over here. So this is about a thousand gallons of water storage. I really don't like to have cluttered area, and I had a few items on the side of the shop here. I just moved them over to the scrap yard, and then I floated out the, or graded the dirt from the shop out this way. So there was an IBC tote right here, and I moved it over to the front, and this, I think I'll move this over to the garden just to elevate the IBC tote that's at the uh, geothermal to give it more water pressure. I stopped working on the root cellar so that I could build the water cistern so I'd harvest water during the rainy season. And when I got back to this, I went ahead and finished off that top layer. So this is four feet. This hasn't been tamped right here, this side, but... Uh, and then I started to dig down inside and I got down six inches and it's just gotten really hard but I I started to go six more inches so once once I finish that it'll be five feet from the bottom to the top of this and then I've got to decide if I can if I can dig another couple feet I'd love to and just keep the root cellar only this high above ground and then put a roof on it and I might build a deck on top uh, Otherwise, I'll have to build up a couple more feet of sandbags. It hasn't rained enough to completely fill the pond or to cover the bottom, but there are a few hundred gallons in here, and sometimes it evaporates a bit and then it rains a little more, and it's really maintained pretty well. And I imagine after monsoon season, this it should be pretty full, and, and we'll see how well it stays full throughout the year. 
I had a toad lay eggs in here, so there are tadpoles. And uh, there's a lot less than there used to be. There must be birds feeding on them. But I think some will make it and we'll have some toads over here. We'll probably hear them uh, in a couple weeks. There are a lot more sprouts on my original Hugo culture here. I've laid seed a few different times. Here's a, I've got a pretty large turnip right here and another here. The Hugo cultures on this side that I have planted feed and grass and different things for the livestock are finally getting watered by the rain. I haven't watered these at all myself and the intent is to see if I can grow some feed without using any of my water. The geothermal has really started to take off. If you remember, I had some mice getting into here because I didn't have any cats. Well, I've got a cat now and she seems to be doing her job really well. I, I planted in here twice and, and the mice wiped it out twice. And then once my cat got old enough, I haven't had any mice problems at all. I planted 40 potatoes down here and I have about 20 total that have come up. Look how tall this guy is. I've already started to add some soil around the base of them to, to continue to give them area to grow and give the potatoes a place to go. And there are other seedlings that are coming up in here. I've got snap peas. Here's something new. This could be bush beans or snap pea. I think it's probably a bush bean. On this side, I have a few more potatoes. There's a snap pea right there. And uh, a few other things, maybe some winter squash. So the geothermal is just watered by the tank here. This is the tank that I want to elevate. It does give me great water pressure. It's not the same as you'd have in the city, but it works just fine. But I figure if I have that pallet laying over there, I can throw it over here and elevate the tank. This is my Vajega raised bed. There's a link below if you want to check one out. And I just planted, there's a bunch of little corn sprouts coming up along the back. Here's something exciting. Uh, a subscriber sent this in. I think the name is pronounced Nira. And so these are, these are little attachments that make quick release. Oh, I didn't put it in hard enough. They make quick release, uh, of the garden hose so i'm going to install some of those on that pump making it easy to switch out and i've got this 50 foot hose which was a 100 foot hose and it has the attachments so that if i need to or feel like it i can easily here's the uh so i can quickly attach these together and it makes it possible for me to go around to the dogs and water them with the hose or top off the fly traps with some water or I can get to any one of the gardens. Day before yesterday, I cut out almost a pound of leafy greens out of here and it just still looks full. And I planted 255 seedlings the other day and you can see different little sprouts coming up. And back here, this is all corn, so uh, there will be a lot of corn and potatoes on the homestead and then I planted just about everything else I would want in here. I've got these corn stalks doing well. There's a ton of beets in here so I'm excited about being able to ho harvest you know corn and potatoes and beans and and different roots that I can store really well in my new root cellar. Of course I'll have carrots and uh, squash and I've got broccoli as well coming in. I'm really happy about that. So we're going to have a loaded root cellar for sure. In regards to rainwater recently, I've filled about one of those entire tanks. So I've gotten about 300 gallons over here, 300 gallons in the pond. Um, the other two tanks are almost completely full from hauling water in. And then the 3,600 gallon cistern over here, uh, 300 gallons of rainwater in there and another 300 that I hauled in. So. There's 600 gallons at least, and it's actually rained a few times since then, and I haven't checked. But I can always just measure it and tell you exactly how much water's in there. The next time I'm in town, I'll grab another tank of water, and I'll just use this to fill up some water, and I'll add it to the cistern and a little bit to the other side for water that I shower with. This tank is almost brim full, and it's the only tank on 
this rain harvesting surface. Soon the plan is to dig another 3,600 gallon cistern that'll go behind this shed and I'll be able to fill it with rainwater off of that. And at that point, I'll have around 14 or 15,000 gallons worth of storage and the ability to harvest about 10,000 gallons annually. And then I can build and expand that system down the road. I've been using the dirt that I dug out of this cistern. If you can imagine, it's 16 feet long, six feet wide, five feet, five and a half feet deep. So all that dirt came out here. I've been using it to make sandbags for the root cellar and I'm going to experiment because a lot of this is caliche and clay and you know you can make a plaster basically out of out of clay and and soil so I think I basically I might already have a, an appropriate mixture if I was to take some of this throw it in the wheelbarrow stir it up and use it as plaster I think it might work so I'll experiment with that um, I think that I will plaster the entire root cellar on the outside to keep it from getting wet. Finally, I'll just have to cut a bunch of logs to go across the top of the root cellar. I'll build a manhole, kind of like I did for the water cistern there, to get down in there to store food. And uh, because it'll be a nice deck surface, I thought that I might just kind of frame in a deck somewhere to kind of hang out that has some shade and whatnot. And of course it would offer more rain harvesting surface. For those that are curious, the manhole on the top of the root cellar would look something like this. This whole piece right here is, is locked down completely, and then this is the lid that pulls up. But I did put four screws in it just to really buckle it down because it gets windy, and that way no dust or dirt or anything can get into the water. That's about all that's new around the homestead right now. If you want to learn more about how I built my frugal homestead, check out my book, Build an Off-Grid Homestead with Next to Nothing. The links are below. You can try my tea, red tea, blue tea, green tea, corn flour. Right now on my website, corn flour is back in stock. There's uh, red tea, blue tea, green tea. They're all there now. So you can get some while it lasts. And then I've got more on the way. And anytime you can't find something on the website, it's usually in stock on Amazon. If you just search Frugal Off Grid. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Give me a subscribe if you're new. And uh, leave a comment if you got any questions. I'll catch you guys on the next video.